Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. This is Ryan from Resume to Offer. We're gonna be talking a little bit about how to cold call the hiring manager after you've already applied to a job. So this subject kind of came up today and I know it's been a while since my last video. It's been maybe a few weeks or maybe in a month or two. Um, very busy, wife's pregnant. <laughs> We're gearing up for that next chapter of life and I actually just finished my last half Ironman, which I'm very stoked about. We got, that's three half Ironmans in the last two years. Different subject, but been very, very busy with a lot of fun stuff. So today we're gonna be, uh, I guess, recharging battery, the new video on basically how to cold call the hiring manager and the recruiter. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Ryan from Resume to Offer. I've been a recruiter for the last 12 years. Staffing firms, uh, I did internal in-house for cybersecurity companies and SaaS companies. So I know a little bit about this and I used to get cold called, you know, once in a while. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a little bit more uh, more prevalent these days. So I want to teach you the you know what you should do. What is the right way to do this? And first off, you should be learning um, how to actually do a cold call in general, especially if you're looking for a SDR, BDR, sales manager, AE, any of those type of sales jobs. Really good to do. Even if you're not, this is good information. But the basic structure of the entire thing is that you have kind of your intro, you have a little bit of your hook, you have maybe three to five discovery questions to kind of ask, you know, a little bit more, find out the pain points, find out, you know, more information. Then you do the 30 second pitch and then you do kind of call to action and close. This is for like a normal SDR template, okay? So when you're cold calling the recruiter, it's a little bit different than this. It's a little bit reversal method. So we're gonna talk about this a little bit more. By the way, if you haven't checked out Higher Levels, um, I do resume optimization, resume review forum. It's a group call, completely free, part of the platform. Um, definitely recommend checking that, that out. We have the SDR Accelerator and we have the Account Executive platform coming at you. That's gonna be a, a new bootcamp. Really, really cool. If you look in the description below, check out that link. If you use that link, there's a coupon code, you get a discount and you get a free one-on-one -on -one with me. I would definitely use that as part of your toolbox so you can do, use that in a mock interview at the right time. Okay, I strongly recommend it since I've helped a lot of people who weren't getting any jobs all of a sudden get to stage two, you know, stage two, stage three, stage four, get the job offer like right after they did this. So strongly recommend doing that. Anyway, back to actually the, the point of the call, point of the video here. So what do you do? So first, what should you do to properly job hunt, properly like you apply to the job, okay? There's a lot of different jobs. Some of the best ones, I'm, I'm going to sales stuff right now. Some of the best ones, yes, Indeed, LinkedIn, um, RepView is another one. Also look at Y Combinator. There's a whole list of different jobs in that area. A lot of people have been using LinkedIn. LinkedIn right now, 90% of people are looking on LinkedIn to find their jobs. A lot of people aren't looking on Indeed. That one, as well as RepView, I've had tons of, tons of students and people I know find jobs from RepView. And I don't know if the hiring managers are just prioritizing that or if it's a better source, but they seem to be getting a lot more traction that way. So strongly recommend, check out RepView. You, you have to do a, a little bit of like, you know, sign up profile and everything, but then you can start applying to jobs. Also, don't forget about Y Combinator. And also, um, I don't know if they, Back, in, back a couple of years ago, AngelList was another good one for startups in the tech space. Uh, I don't know if it's the same type of company. I heard they've evolved since then, but might want to check that out as well. So let's say you find a job, you apply. So if I'm a recruiter and I post a job, I'm going to get a thousand, like a thousand resumes in three, two to three days. That's the competition as of right now. Okay. So you have to do a lot of different things to help you stand out from the crowd. Now, if it's a company that's under like usually 50 or maybe 100 people, they have recruiters, they have maybe an HR staff that's checking these resumes manually, and they'll cap it around a certain amount. So, which is why it's very important, you wanna be, you wanna make sure that you are one of the first 100 to be in that window, because they might cap it at a certain point, okay? If it's a bigger company, you know, they might use something called an applicant tracking system, what's called an ATS system by recruiters and HR software. Five years ago, 5% of all companies were using AI technology to kind of weed people out. Now it's 40%, which is why you should make sure that you have your, your resume is 
optimized, what we call ATS optimized. It has specific words in the resume embedded in it that will give it a ranking. Okay, very important to know about. It'll give it a ranking. And you, so if you say like a thousand resumes go into the pipeline, okay, the ATS is gonna pull out certain things, give it a score, and only pop out maybe the top 50, top 100 resumes that are going to get in front of the recruiter. So that's why it's very important that you have it optimized. If you don't, there's a, a video I've done on this channel about how to optimize your resume. If you need a little bit more specific, I would strongly recommend either you can hire me for a one-on-one, -on -one, we go through the entire thing, I can point, pinpoint it all out, or the second thing is you can join higher levels, use that discount code, use that link, and you'll get a free one-on-one, -on -one. and then I do this also on the resume reviews on those. So strongly recommend you make sure that your resume is ATS compliant and optimized. Otherwise, I don't want to have to tell you how much time you might be wasting, okay? So, let's say you apply, you find the perfect SDR role, sales development role, there's a company that's between 200 to 500 people, you just applied, and there's a few ways you can do this, okay? So sometimes it'll have the person who actually posted the job you know, portal, okay? It actually has them. A lot of recruiters, about half of them, actually have their information on, the, on, on their LinkedIn page. They want people to contact them, okay? So they might have their email, they might have their LinkedIn, you know, they might have their phone number. If they have a phone number, that's really good. Now, there's a lot of ways that if, if it doesn't have the right person on the job board, you can explore the company. Smaller companies, it's a lot easier to pinpoint who's probably doing the posting, right? It could be the sales manager. It could be if there's a recruiter or a talent acquisition manager, obviously they're doing the posting. Usually in companies that companies that are below 200, you can easily find out who it is. When it's a company that's like 10,000 people, it's a little tough. It's a little tough to find out kind of who did it. Um, so that's why sometimes it's good to focus on companies that are between 100 to 500 employees. So you can pinpoint actually who the actual talent acquisition or hiring manager or sales manager is so that you can actually call them directly. So how can you find out you know, their information? Either they post it on LinkedIn, Sometimes you just do a Google search, you might actually get lucky, but you can also use different apps out there. There's Hunter.io, Apollo, um, Seamless, Zoom Info. Seamless is one of my personal favorites. You know, one of the guys on our, on, on our uh, group meet was actually having an interview with Seamless today, which was awesome. Good for him. But you wanna make sure that you're using one of these things so you can find out the actual information of the person. And some of them are available for free download. You can get a trial version. It's good to do it when you're in real job hunting mode to do a trial version so you don't have to pay for 30 or 60 days. You know, that's a, a really good way to go. So let's say you have all the information. You have an optimized resume. It's going through the ATS you know, system. You um, have the information, great. Okay, you can now cold call the recruiter, cold call the recruiter. How does it go? There's a few ways that you can do it. So you want, I prefer, this is my professional method, but when you first call them, um, it's good to use a bit of a permission opener. Okay, permission opener is a little bit like, you, like you call them up, ring, ring, hey Jack, this is Ryan, hope you're doing well. Just wanted to give you a quick heads up. I actually applied to your new SDR role. Think I would be a really, really good match. Do you have a quick two, three minutes? I'd love to tell you a little bit about myself, why I could be a win-win for your organization, okay? Something along those lines. Permission opener is asking for permission so that they don't hang up the call as well as how to get their attention, okay? How do you get their unlimited attention, their undivided attention for the next five minutes, okay? And I'll be honest, I've had people do this to me and I'm like, I respect it. I appreciate you being forthcoming about it. All right, you have my attention. Versus somebody who kind of like, maybe it's a spam, it's another type of sales call and you and they're trying to deter you somewhere else, I automatically like have a response of hanging up. So if you tell me already it's a cold call, but also you applied the reason for the call and you ask for permission for the next like two minutes, three minutes, up to five minutes, usually, I'm sure you'll see if you start measuring this, that you'll have a longer percentage of accomplishing um, kind of mock calls and mock cold calls with the recruiter, okay? So first off, do a permission opener. Second thing is, you know, once you gain permission, 
great. You're like, I'm like, hey, perfect. Thank you so much. So I, I want to respect your time. You tell them a little bit about why you like the company. Okay, so that's the first thing. Do a little bit of flattery, but it has to be realistic. It has to be congruent. It has to actually like make sense. So, you know, something about the company, it could be, hey, I like what you guys are doing in the industry. It could be the product service line. It could be the company culture. It could be the role itself and, and kind of like where you want to go as, a, you know, in your future. It could be the leadership is another big one that a lot of people don't realize. You like the leadership of the company. But something about the company that's like, hey, this is the reason why I want to join you guys. A little bit about myself. You give your one minute elevator pitch. Okay, I mean a minute. Time yourself and practice this over and over again. What makes you the best one? And you definitely want to mention, okay, some of your background, if you've done sales before or communication or customer service, as well as if you've done any type of sales tools. If you've used LinkedIn Sales Navigator or HubSpot CRM or any of the other ones, this is the part where you want to mention it. Then afterward, you ask some questions. You ask some basic questions. Make sure I'm getting notifications. By the way, today instead of coffee, I decided to um, smoothie. So get staying healthy. Next, you want to do some questions. So some key questions is like, just so I know, what is kind of the what is the ideal candidate that you're looking for? If you had to pick a candidate between other people, what are the two to three must-haves? Okay. Based on everything I've said right now, how do you think I match up with, with kind of the candidate you guys are looking for, right? You want to ask two or three questions. Same thing when you're doing an SCR role. Um, you ask discovery questions. Those three questions or variations of them, those are your discovery questions. So again, you do a permission opener. Um, you do something about the company that you actually are like, here's my reason. Here's my why. Then your elevator pitch. Then a few different questions to open them up, ask them questions, keep them engaged, and also find out how big the gap is, okay? How big the gap is before the ideal candidate, ideal candidate, and yourself, okay? After all that, I'm sure you've gotten them a little bit interested. Then you can go like, hey, I wanna respect your time, but you know, wanted to connect, even if it's not a fit for now, I would love to be, you know, maintain a professional relationship for now and the future. But would love to obviously, hey, I know this is a bold statement, but fortune favors the bold. Would love to see, hey, can I make it to the first round and prove myself? I think I could do a good job with your company and be a great fit for you guys. What do you say? Okay. That's a little bit of the bolder one, but it's true. They like hunters when it comes to salespeople. There's hunters and farmers, you know, they're looking for like kind of that 80% hunter mentality. So if you can let them know and close the sale, that's a great way to go. So make sure to, at the end of the call, ask to go to the next round, okay? Next round could be either, you know, hey, I'd be, I'd be happy to jump on a video call with you so you can see me and we can like kind of make this a, a formal interview, or I'd be happy to do a mock sales call with you guys. Which one works best for you? So that's kind of the structure that I would recommend that you approach that you use. Um, and yeah, I think you can yield some good results. If I look at kind of this is statistic, I'm tongue tied today. If I look at the statistics of people that are applying to jobs right now, we are seeing a lot of people who are using different methods. Okay, if you are just applying, especially if you easy apply, uh, you are getting lost in the wasteland. If you are messaging the recruiter with a LinkedIn message right afterward, that's better. If you're emailing the person and a LinkedIn LinkedIn message, that's better. If you're doing a video, you know, a voice memo to them, that's even better. But if you cold call those are having the highest percentage of success rates, okay? How should you do this? So I would recommend kind of do it in cadence. You apply to the job, and then maybe like an hour or two hours later, you give them a cold call. If they don't respond or you leave a voicemail, right? Follow up with kind of a LinkedIn message. Next day, follow up with an email. The day after that, especially if you have their information, send them a, a text message and a voice memo. Okay, try that approach. I think that might yield some good results for you guys. Anyway, hope this has been helpful. Definitely check out the links below. I have a bunch of different um, different websites, platforms that can help you on your job hunt, as well as if you want to get better at your sales abilities, definitely check those out. Um, again, check out Higher Levels. They're the ones that I partner with. I know the owners. They're great guys, and we've helped a lot of people get jobs and become number one SDRs in their company. So check those out. Check out the link below if you want a free one-on-one -on -one with me. Happy to kind of chat with you guys and help you out in the whole
crazy economy that's kind of going on right now. But hope you guys are doing well. Have a great weekend and uh, talk to you guys soon, okay? Cheers.